Hey everybody, Yankee here. I don't know how many of you have heard yet, but it appears that we have come to the end of an era in the gun world here. Gaston Glock has passed away at the age of 94. And I know what you're all thinking right now, must be foul play, uh, you know, 94 years old. But it seems he's passed away, we don't know why, but I would assume natural causes at his age. But this really is the end of an era. Uh, Gaston Glock, whether you like Glocks or not, you have to admit that he really revolutionized modern uh, small arms, handguns. This was a person who took things that already existed. I mean, he didn't invent striker fired or polymer frames or anything. There's not really much of anything on the Glock that he invented. He just put them together in a way that's never been done before and had the dedication to market it, to get it out there and make it successful and really made handgun ownership cool to a lot of people. So he did a lot for the gun community, whether you liked the Glock or not. He kind of put us where we are today, as far as people carrying for self-defense, etc. He really opened the door to that, did a lot of good by cross-promoting military and law enforcement with the civilian market. He was a genius when it came to getting his product out there and getting it in people's hands. So we owe him that at the very least, no matter what you think of him as a person, which apparently as a person, he was kind of a, a slimy guy, a womanizer, you know, misogynist, all that other stuff. But I mean, look at his generation. I mean, come on. Can't really hold people of that generation to the standards of this generation. So, uh, and I, like I said, don't care what he was like personally and don't care if you like Glocks themselves. You kind of have to admit that he is one of the predominant forces in what we think of as the gun community today. And the fact that people carry guns and are interested in guns, etc. He had a lot to do with that. So we owe him thanks for that. Now, this is an end of an era, as I say, because I think it's also going to change, cause a change with what Glock, the company, does. Because I don't know how many people have followed the company Glock or read his book or whatever, but he was someone that said, we found something that works. We're not going to do something different. We're going to continue to do the same thing because it works, there's a market for it, there's no need to diversify, become bigger or whatever. They were big enough, they were gigantic, and he didn't see any point in trying to venture off the path. That's, you know, good marketing, I guess, but it also stifled creativity at Glock. You know, people always wanting things like, we want a carbine, blah, blah, blah. Well, that wasn't gonna happen under Gaston. He was uh, vehemently opposed to such things. Now, he's not going to be there making the decisions. And you got to know, he, this guy was making the decisions pretty much right up till when he died. He kept control of his company. So now that he's gone, these voices that were inside the company that wanted to do different things are going to have more receptive management, more receptive ownership even. So we're probably going to see some diversification at Glock. We're probably going to see some new items from Glock. Maybe we'll see a carbine. But that's what I think is interesting right now. Like I said, that since he's died, that is an end of an era because he had control. With that control gone and with, that, with him being a limiting factor gone, I'm curious to see what Glock's going to do. Now, I personally hope they don't stray too far from what they do. I hope they don't mess with the actual handgun line because here's the thing. Everyone always talks about the changes they want made to Glocks. Well, if you made all those changes, they wouldn't be Glocks. And I like having Glock as an option. A lot of people like having Glock as an option. I wouldn't want the Glock to become just another Walther or another Smith & Wesson because then we actually have less options in the market. So I like that they've stuck to doing what they do with their handguns, but I am curious to see what else they'll do. You know, I always liken the people saying, oh, I want Glock to do this, to like the people who are always like, why don't they do this with the Wrangler? And why don't they do that with the Wrangler, you know, from Jeep? When they're like, oh, if they did this, it would be better on the road. If they did that, it'd be better on the road. You know, not understanding that the reason Jeep is the way it is is because it's not meant to be great on the road. And then Jeep actually put together all the things these people wanted in one package. You know, like, here's what the Wrangler would be if we did those things you wanted. And it was the Renegade. And when the Renegade hit the market, everyone went, eh, pew, 
even though that's what they've been asking for for a long time because people don't know what they want and they don't understand that when you change something that's great too much, you have something mediocre and you don't have the great thing anymore. And that kind of gave them a taste of that. And it's the same thing with Glock. So I am curious to see what they do, but I do want them to stay faithful to the Glock pistols because like I said, we need Glocks on the market. Uh, they are a mainstay. They are uh, a baseline for a lot of other guns. And I hope they stay there because we need them. But like I said, I do want to give props to Gaston for the things he's done. Let everyone know he has passed. And I hope, like I just said, that the company sticks to the basics but I do want to see what they can come up with in the future.